Welcome, you're watching your trades on ET now. I am Harshaita and with me is my co-anchor Srishti Sharma. Uh, very quickly Srishti, of course, uh, fifth straight week of declines. Uh, uh, my apologies, third straight week of declines uh, for the Nifty. Uh, down 2% for the week. Uh, uh, but uh, the positive side, 17100 uh, is, is what we've uh, touched back uh, on, 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 a Friday, on a Friday close. Yeah. So that's definitely the positive. Absolutely harsh. But if we look at the broad themes that played into the market for this particular week, so clearly the unpleasant global queues led by this new slow we were getting in the banking space, the benchmark indices for India trading below that 200 support, DMA support level as well as continued FIS selling. These three broad themes definitely played out in the Indian markets for the first three days of the week. We were clearly declining. It was an undecisive Thursday, but a fickling Friday coming in for the Indian benchmark indices and the bulls were seen to be taking a charge on the Friday session where Nifty managed to close over a gains of 100 points for the index and the bank Nifty was also shown in the green. But other than that, Nifty, as you were mentioning, hit a multi-week low. This was the third straight week of the decline coming in when it comes to the Nifty mid-cap indices, hitting a seven-month low and similar kind of a decline for the Nifty small-cap index as well. A lot of sectors in the Nifty, uh, Nifty and the NSC space were actually seen to be hitting its multi-week lows and just spotting out some of the weak sectors and the weak links in the markets. Look at the move in the bank Nifty that was down around 3%. The Nifty PSU was the top sectoral loser with a decline of 5.5% followed by Nifty Auto with declines of 4% and even Nifty IT was something that was showing a bit of a weakness. But talk about, let's talk about some of the stocks that were in focus from the realty space. That was in the sweet spot after DLF said that they have actually made a sales of over 8,000 crores within three days in Guru Gram and the crude derivatives that crude factor was playing well for India actually when the Brent crude prices were seen to be hitting below that $75 per barrel mark since 2021 and see the move in BPCL one of the top sectors and the top gainers in Nifty 50 for the week gone by the change of guard in the IT space which was uh, we were closely tracking with with TechM Mohit Joshi being the new managing director and and Rajesh Gopinathan resigning as the TCS top boss. And lastly, uh, we were tracking the move in Reliant Industries, which did a 52-week low for itself. But the big question that is lying ahead for the next week is that we have very important cues coming in from the global markets yet again, where we have the FOMC meet. And in India, how much should one have confidence on the recovery that we witnessed on the Friday's market? Let's try to understand that and try getting answers from our experts. And on to the show today, we are being joined by Rajesh Parvia from Access Securities as well as Ajay Bagga also joining us on to the show. Rajesh, firstly, let me come to you and let's talk about the levels that you will be tracking for Nifty 50. Uh, for Nifty as well as Bank Nifty, we are clearly um, trading below their key support levels, but the Friday sentiment was actually the opposite. So going ahead, how do you see the market direction? Yeah, good afternoon, Shristi. So, yeah, it's the second day where we have seen, you know, Bank Nifty uh, is tried to hold this 39,000 level and uh, we have seen a recovery, especially in last half an hour of trade, post this announcement of this HDFC, HDFC bank merger. So, Bank Nifty uh, has witnessed some bit of, you know, some short covering uh, in uh, uh, some of the call writing, which was there at around 39,400, 500 strikes. So, some call writers have covered their position. Uh, as Bank Nifty has uh, moved up above uh, 39,500 level, especially in last hour of trade. So looking at the overall setup, uh, uh, we believe that you know some more uh, positive uh, move we can expect in the coming week. Uh, but again, 40,000 is likely to act as a major hurdle as of now. Until uh, Bank Nifty not crosses this 40,000 level, a uh, major short covering is, is not uh, going to happen in the system. So major short covering will come only above 40,000 level and most of the call writers for monthly expiry are writing the position around 40,000 strike throughout the month. So above 40,000, yes, there could be another round of short we can expect in Bank Nifty to uh, take it higher towards 40,500, which is the next target we can expect above 40,000 level. But as of now, structure is weak. Shorts are there in the system for Nifty as well as for the Bank Nifty. Uh, if we talk about Bank, uh, if we talk about Nifty, so 17,300 is the key level on the higher side until uh, Nifty not manages to cross above 17,300. 
the sell on rise is the strategy for nifty also 17250 is the immediate hurdle which we are expecting for this pullback to uh, nifty managed to uh, gain uh, some bit of you know pr uh, point uh, price price point uh, in the last hour of trade but still uh, 17200 250 are the immediate uh, challenging level on the hard side if nifty not crosses those level then again uh, some uh, shorts we can expect around those level on the breakdown of 17020 level uh, this downtrend is likely to continue further and maybe we can see uh, 16850 again on the lower side so still a uh, trend is uh, weak sell on rise is the strategy 17300 is the stop loss for nifty and for bank nifty 40000 is the key level on the higher side uh, if any pullback comes in the coming trading sessions thanks for that rajesh ajay uh, harsh joining in as well very quickly i'll move to ajay uh, talk to us a critical week in front of us fomc meet uh, and of course uh, that will be critical to you know uh, try and understand as to where markets will move what's your sense uh, where does it go next week yeah uh, you know i'm expecting volatility and i'm uh, still very cautious on the markets uh, uh, expecting a 25 basis point uh, rate hike uh, from the fed uh, they won't pause uh, the ecb has given a pointer to uh, how the central banks are thinking uh, so expect a 25 basis point rate hike uh, the problems in the banks are not fully sorted uh, today also uh, credit so is opened 5% down uh, in the european opening uh, so uh, still uh, some distance to be covered in restoring confidence in the us banking system and uh, some uh, bits of the european banking system unfortunately we are getting caught in it uh, though we don't have too much of a direct linkage uh, but we have seen uh, you know say it companies have a very strong correlation of uh, with the financial conditions in the us markets uh, so uh, you could expect some correction there and uh, overall fi flows uh, you know uh, flowing out of india uh, based on uh, what's happening around the world the good news is uh, you know now uh, brokerages are putting out uh, an analysis that india uh, uh, has a better macro and maybe we should uh, look at india at the cost of countries like korea and taiwan which are very highly correlated to the uh, health of the us economy uh, so maybe uh, you know some uh, time down the line we'll uh, start getting flows uh, from fis but right now especially for next week caution advice uh, we are going to see very volatile markets and uh, this is not the time to uh, start uh, picking up uh, fresh positions in the markets okay that's interesting to note because a lot of foreign brokerages are highlighting that they are not expecting any uh, rate hikes from the upcoming fomc me but others of the view that there could be a 25 basis point hike so we'll watch out for that but ajay given the setup and not just the next week what we are seeing uh, is a bit um, interesting situation because there are some of the riskier asset classes if i may call them that is cryptocurrencies that are now uh, gaining and on the other hands the safer heaven that is gold is also seen to be inching up other than that the crude prices are also down uh, hitting uh, they were they actually touched below that 75 dollar per barrel mark after 2021 so how are you reading the whole macro setup right now not just the next upcoming week other than that if there is a rate hike how would you read the whole situation if the momentum continues a very good point uh, you know oil is more because of the chinese demand has not come back as strongly the chinese numbers showed that retail was not uh, as up to the mark and today we saw a, a reserve rate uh, cut by the chinese uh, as of march 27th of 25 basis point so they are clearly trying to stimulate the economy uh, to some extent and are not happy with the kind of growth that they are seeing. so oil is suffering because of that we have seen us inventories going up and uh, us and europe uh, we are expecting slower growth uh, i am not expecting a full blown recession uh, the atlanta fed number for quarter 1 for us is still at 3.2% so take uh, you know 0.5 to 0.8% as 
measurement error, uh, at least a 2% uh, GDP growth year on year uh, for the US is on board uh, for the first quarter. Uh, so uh, recession uh, will probably, if at all, be a thing of 2024. But as we saw on this week, Shristi, the way things moved so fast, uh, that was the risk. And, you know, frankly, Friday was a risk because FDIC normally uh, uh, takes over banks on Fridays to ensure that they get a full weekend and the market impact is minimized. So uh, there was uh, fear uh, till yesterday, but then with the uh, 30 billion uh, deposits that the big banks gave to First Republic, I think that was a big sentiment booster. Overall, about 164 billion taken from the Fed uh, discount window and uh, the emergency window. Uh, if you uh, compare it to 2008, the maximum was at about 111 billion dollars. So we have already crossed that. And apart from that, the FDIC has uh, pumped in about 150 billion into the bridge banks, uh, into the three banks that it has taken over. Uh, it has pumped in about uh, 145 billion dollars. So 300 billion of uh, uh, you know uh, emergency support has already gone into the U.S. banking system. Is it enough? Uh, just one uh, factor I would like to highlight: unrealized losses of the U.S. banks as of December was 620 billion. The total combined profits of U.S. banks last year were 260 billion. So uh, clearly the unrealized losses are uh, quite perturbing. Good thing is these are uh, held to maturity security. So if there is no bank run, there is no deposit withdrawal, then uh, we continue till these securities mature off and uh, you know the banks uh, will be healthy again. And that is what the Fed is trying. So I would say the situation uh, remains uh, one of caution. It's not 2008, it's not bad lending. It's a maturity mismatch, so it's duration risk and interest risk. It's not a solvency risk this time around. Even for Credit Suisse, it was more a sentimental thing. If the U.S. bank's issue was not there, you wouldn't have noticed the uh, Credit Suisse shareholders' comments. It was more a fallout of the U.S. banking. And Credit Suisse got mm -hmm. hurt further. Of course, it was a weak bank. Right. But uh, its solvency ratios, its uh, liquidity... Coverage ratios are very strong at 150%. So uh, it wasn't right. in that kind of a scenario. Hmm. But with the deposits going out, it will need more uh, help from the Swiss National Bank. Okay. So having said all that, macro is not good. Macro is slowing. And expect our, uh, our uh, equities also to follow uh, the Western right. equities downwards. Right. Uh, so thanks so much for that, gentlemen. Uh, it was great discussing uh, what you see through the coming week. Uh, but with that, we'll slip into a very short break. More on the other side, of course. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Your Trades on ET Now and on to the show, we have our experts with us, Rajesh Agrawal as well as Ajay Bhagan. Rajesh, let me come to you. We did touch upon uh, the levels that you are tracking for the benchmark indices. But other than that, in the week gone by, there were so many stocks that were buzzing and the action in the stocks was amazing to track. Going ahead, um, which are some of the counters that are on your radar? Uh, would you like to share that? So, Shrasti, first talk is from the real estate space, that is uh, clearly DLF is the buy. Uh, as we see the overall structure for the stock, uh, after the corrective action, the stock has formed a base at around 350 level. And the recovery which we have seen in, since last two trading sessions, now stocks managed to give breakout of its uh, previous swing high. So, uh, now if we feel that you know if stocks continues to hold above 360 level, then possibly stock can scale up further higher from the current level and the next target uh, for the stock which we are projecting is around 398. So one can buy with stop loss of 360 uh, 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 and the upside target is 398 for DLF. Another stock is from FMCG pack that is uh, Godrej CP. Uh, overall structure is positive. Now stock is penetrating its uh, multiple resistance zone on the weekly chart as well as on the daily chart. So looking at the overall structure and the buying action which we have seen in the Godrej CP in today's session, we believe that you know this stock can 
continue its upward momentum and in this continuation we are expecting target of 3 uh, 980 on the high side and one can keep a stop loss of 930 to buy godrej cp uh, third stock is from mid cap space that is apl apollo a uh, stock was in downtrend but in today's session we have seen very strong buying action now stock is trading above 50 day 100 day moving average the today's move has given a breakout of its falling trend line on the daily chart and looking at the breakout on the apl apollo we believe that this momentum is likely to continue further in the coming week and 1330 could be the possible target on the higher side one can buy apl apollo with stop loss of 1225 Right. Thanks so much for that. Uh, Ajay, we'll move to you. Uh, you penciling in a 25 basis point rate hike next week. Interest rate, uh, or rather, interest rate sensitive, sensitive stocks will definitely be in focus. But outside of that, what sectors are you looking at for next week? You know, a couple of weeks back, uh, I mentioned sugar. Uh, sugar, there is uh, tightness happening uh, globally, and uh, our uh, sugar companies uh, should uh, benefit from that. uh and apart from that cement capital goods all the domestically oriented uh, companies is uh, what i would look at but again i'm saying uh, i'm not uh, giving any investment call right now uh, i think we have to wait uh, this period out uh, the risk is too much uh, hopefully uh, you know it is contained and hopefully the measures taken uh, will cool down the uh, stress in the markets but Uh, we are not at a very good zone, uh, uh, you know, in terms of uh, the fundamentals deteriorating and sentiment getting spoiled. So uh, I would say it's better to wait out a week, ten days, and see how things work out in the U.S. and then take a call. And clearly, domestic uh, companies will be the focus. Uh, IT will get hit uh, from the U.S. slowdown, European slowdown, especially uh, the BFSI slowdown. So. uh that uh, despite uh, you know what we saw on friday uh, uh this week uh, uh, some of the it uh, stocks uh, rallying uh, that's more of a uh, you know a, a bounce after a long period of correction i would not uh, pay too much attention to that stick to the domestic uh, counters uh, and the domestic consumption stories uh, that's where uh, one has to stay and indian banks are in a pretty good shape i think that will rally chinese banks did very well if you see across the globe uh, the uh, one stand out uh, outperformer was chinese banks this week and i think it's a matter of time before indian banks also get that kind of interest right now it is more a risk off is hurting us but otherwise fundamentally indian banks are a domestic story and one of the best domestic stories uh, in our market so i would still say stay positive for indian banks but take a call after a week 10 days okay so that's the outlook on in an it space sugar space as well as the banking space and with this we we'll let you go on that ajay and rajesh thank you so much for joining us today on et now and helping our viewers understand that what are factors could actually play for the markets in the upcoming week but let's move on let's